You know, the board gaming hobby can get kind of expensive with games costing 20, 30, 50, hundreds of dollars, but it doesn't have to. In fact, here are five games that you can play right now for free. Well, mostly free. And you don't even need friends to play these games because these are games you can play solo as well. Hi, this is Ambie from Board Game Blitz, and a few years ago I started trying out free print and play games. Print and play games are games that are available online in a PDF form or something where you can print them out, assemble them yourselves, and then play them. So I grew up liking arts and crafts, but I was new to printing and assembling board games. So I started with simpler, easier to print and assemble games. So I'm gonna share with you some of the ones that I really enjoyed and that are printable by people who are new to printing and playing. Also as a note, I'm not a big fan of roll and write games, but there are a ton of free print and play roll and write games that are just a single page of printing out or just writing on a PDF on your computer. So if you like roll and write games, you should check out some of those. But the first print and play game that I'm gonna talk about is called Black Sonata. This actually has a published version, which I think is extremely similar or maybe the same as the print and play version, but it's still available as a print and play. Black Sonata is a solo deduction hidden movement game, which sounds like it wouldn't work, like how would you do hidden movement solo, but it actually works really well. The theme of the game is you're looking for the dark lady in William Shakespeare's sonnets. And the way the hidden movement works is there's a deck of cards with symbols on it that match the symbols on the map. You set this up, based on the setup, which has a lot of different setups in the instructions. But as you go through the deck, it tells you the symbols that the dark lady is moving towards. And so you can kind of deduce where she could be because there's different symbols on the map, but then like some overlap and stuff. So as you narrow it down, you, you try to catch her. And then once you catch her, there's another layer of deduction because there's a deck of cards and one of them is the dark lady. And then so you get a clue card each time you catch her and then you need to try to figure out which card is her by eliminating using the clue cards that you've gotten already. So if you like deduction games like I do, then Black Sonata is great because it's got the hidden movement deduction, but then also the clue card deduction in it. So there's two layers of deduction and it's solo, which is really cool. <laughs> Black Sonata does have a lot of printing and assembling, including punching holes in the middle of cards, which can get kind of hard, but it does have good instructions for how to print and like which pages to print and how to glue them together so that it works double-sided. So even though it was one of my first games that I assembled, I found it rather easy because of the instructions. The next game I'm gonna talk about is Bargain Basement Bathysphere, which is a solo roll and write campaign game. I know I said I don't like roll and writes, but this is one of the exceptions to that. I've played about half of the campaign of Bargain Basement Bathysphere, the print and play version. There is also a published version that just came out and that has some changes and updates to the maps and the rules, but the print and play version is still available and still a lot of fun. In Bargain Basement Bathysphere, you are trying to dive down in your bathysphere, which is like a submarine, but it's like not working very well because it's Bargain Basement one. <laughs> and you're trying to go down two different spaces on the ocean and trying to collect different items to get more points and then get back up to the surface. But you have to get back up to the surface without dying in order to get those points. Each turn you're rolling dice to move down to the different spots and you pick which dice to do in which order so that you're trying to like land on certain treasure spots or land on other spots to try to not get hurt. And if you pass over certain spots, you'll get hurt and you can take damage or stress um, or you lose oxygen. And each time you take damage, you have fewer dice to roll. So as you're re-rolling, which also takes up oxygen, you have fewer dice. And so like, you don't wanna get too far because you have to get back up to the top. So there's good planning and like puzzling and figuring out based on what you roll, what you can do and which spaces you can go to to get the best out of your rolls. And also because it's a campaign, it keeps adding more rules and more things that you can get. And there's like upgrades in between levels as the campaign progresses. So it's really neat unlocking things and trying to do well so that you can have better things in the future. There are a lot of pages to print but it's very easy because there's no assembly required before you start playing. So you just print and then immediately start playing. So this is also a really good intro print and play game. Next is another game that also has a published version. There's a pattern here. A lot of the good print and play games end up being published. But Under Falling Skies, a nine card print and play game, there's a published version called Under Falling Skies that has a lot more stuff with a campaign and stuff but the nine card print and play version is just one game and still gives you a taste of the game. Under Falling Skies is a dice placement game where you're trying to survive an alien invasion, save the city from an alien invasion. I guess kind of like a Space Invaders type theme, but the cards are placed in a vertical line. So that's like the space and the mothership is at the top and the city is at the bottom. And each turn you're gonna be rolling dice and then placing them on your city on the bottom to do different actions, but then the dice that you place also move the aliens that number of spaces. So there's a little puzzle there because you wanna do what you want with your powers, but then you also 
don't want the aliens to move too much. And there are certain spaces that the aliens land on that are good and certain spaces that are bad for you. So you want to try to get them to land on the spaces that you want them to land on. So it's pretty fun and can be kind of difficult depending on what you roll. The printing for this one is only nine cards, which is one page of paper, but it's double sided. So two, two pages of printing and gluing together you could do. If you're finding this video helpful, please make sure to like it so that other people can find it too and find more free games to play. The next game is Ambagabus, which I don't think has a published version, but this is a solo tile placement game where you're making a maze but trying to close off the maze. If you've played Bandito or heard of it, it's kind of similar to that, except it's a little bit more puzzly because there's a restriction on which openings you can place on. Each opening has a number, one, two, three, four, and you have to place on the opening that has the lowest number. Sometimes they can tie, so you might want to like try to make openings that are tied so you have more openings uh, like you can place on, there's two, one opening, so you can place on either of those and you're trying to enclose off all of the openings in the maze. It's a fun little quick spatial puzzle game. I like spatial games, so I enjoyed it. I think technically the files for this are double-sided, but you can print it single-sided, which is what I did. And there, there's a lot of cutting because it's a lot of tiles. So it takes some time to assemble, but once you assemble it, it's, it's a quick game to set up and play. The last game I'm talking about today is Elf on the Stealth which is a one-time play escape room type game. <laughs> so I really love escape rooms and all escape room type games, so I already love this game. But Elf on the Stealth is a holiday card that's also a game. So you have to print out double-sided on this one and you have to like make sure it's aligned. So the printing is more difficult than all the other ones, I think. Or like you have to be more precise than all the other ones. But it's pretty neat because you fold it and it looks like a holiday card, but it also has a lot of puzzles in there. It also uses a web app so you're gonna have the holiday card in conjunction with the web app open. That web app has the stories. And also I think you put in the answers to the puzzles and then it unlocks more puzzles and more story. The puzzles vary in the types of puzzles. There's some logic puzzles, some like puzzles to do with the shapes or spatial parts. So if you like escape room type games or puzzle hunt type things, then this would be really fun for you. Or if you have a friend or family member who likes those, then this makes a great holiday card for them too. So that was just five games that you could print out right now if you have a printer. And if you wanna learn about more print and play games, then check out my free print and play game playlist because I played through a lot of them and have talked about a lot of them. If you have any suggestions for more free print and play games I should play, then let me know in the comments below. And please make sure to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching Board Game Blitz. Bye.